If I'm a burly man with a burly plan, would you come and shave my ass as fast as you can? Anyways, uh, speaking of the smooth buttocks, um, <clears throat> actually, I don't know where I want to go with this one because uh, there's two places I want to take it, and I really haven't thought about either one of these places very much, so this is like totally off the cuff. Um, but I probably should. I should probably do the part two of the dinosaurs created the pyramids. Um, because I didn't even get into that part. Basically, if I was to recap the original, I'll probably have to do a couple different variants of that before I, I get the, the thought and the, the exact... Uh, yeah, before the proper and right clip is created, I'll probably have to do it a couple times. So there might be two or three different variant clips of the topic. <clears throat> but essentially what my... I don't want to say theory, but my idea was, um, is that if God is light, and if the faster you move toward light or reach speed of light, time either slows down or just stops altogether. <clears throat> now, if God is quote unquote dwelling among Adam and Eve in the garden then you could theoretically have a time dilation field around the garden itself um, which means that the two human beings that were created would be in stasis outside of time while the rest of the world slash universe slash whatever uh, continues to go forward. Because there's an interesting fact that when they were... Well, actually, this could explain an, a, a problem that I've always had with the Bible. Which, uh, yes, there are many, but... Uh, no, I believe the Bible. Don't misunderstand me, but there are some questions that I do have. One of them is... Where was God? Because if he dwelt among the people, where was God when Eve was being beguiled by the serpent? Where was he? Now, if he left, then they would have gone from being outside of time to being in the normal flow of time again, thus the serpent could communicate with Eve and create the problem. Because up to that point, there was no communication between the rest of the world and the Garden of Eden because, like I said, they were in a pocket of space and time that was different than everything else. Um... Now, it depends on how far it branched out. There could have been different variants where, like, a couple miles around the Garden of Eden, however big it was, could have been affected slightly. So it could have been slower time there, which would be interesting because you'd, you'd have this... I don't know, you'd have a really interesting dilemma going on there. Because if that was the case... Um, yeah, because you, you'd have different parts of the world uh, I guess you could say evolving at a different time rate and the further it went out it's almost like a black hole the, the closer you get to it you know time eventually starts to slow down <clears throat> so it's I don't know that's that's an interesting thing because, like, if you want to do carbon dating and stuff or in, in shit, um, that kind of puts you in a bind, especially if certain parts of the world show things at different rates. Now, again, if there was a time dilation field created by God Himself being light, essentially moving at the speed of light, if He were to come and quote unquote dwell among the people, um, there could literally be a pocket of dead space or no uh, dead 
uh, time. Well, there's no time at all. Again, the garden itself. And they, like I said, could have been shielded in this pocket of essentially wonder and who knows. I mean, who knows how long they actually lived. No, it says that Adam, Adam was like, what, 900 years old? Because it's interesting, the minute they leave the garden, they started to age. I don't know, I think that's very interesting. Um, and, well, I mean, the fountain of, uh, basically the fountain of youth. The tree of life. I don't know. I mean, maybe there's a correlation there. I don't know, but my initial theory was, not, again, I don't see theory, but my initial idea was that, quote-unquote, the serpent was a dinosaur or a uh, genetically manipulated being that had reptile features, essentially humanoid reptile, which is where a lot of people get the idea of the... Uh, Anunnaki and whatnot, and the, the, the whatever you call them, um, because that's kind of it's kind of fucked up, but it's kind of cool at the same time. Because you you would have this. Now again, think about this. And again, I did talk about this in the last clip, but I, I have to reiterate it for this one, obviously. Um, if the fallen angels came down from whatever plane of existence they were on they would be dwelling in this area now I don't know if they can physically take on human form we assume they can because the Bible does mean like Lot the angels came to Lot and his family so they did take on a human type form um, so either way you would have that type of idea because God does God does say that we will create man in our image like spiritual you know angels and, and whatnot man will be created in our image so if it's in our image meaning heavenly people heavenly beings again God you know Yeshua, uh, angels, demons, well, not demons, but fallen angels, <clears throat> um, so on and so forth, then they could definitely have taken on, quote-unquote, the same image. So there could actually have been a race of people on Earth before Adam and Eve. And there's a lot of speculation that that actually is the case. Um... Now there's there's pre-flood, post-flood, and then there's you know when human beings kind of came into the picture and be fruitful and go multiply, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's that, but there's also hints that there's stuff even before that, i.e., the fallen angels taking up residence here on a physical level. Um, and if you throw in the dinosaurs. And, no, I'm sorry. This is my own my own thing, but I don't I don't buy carbon dating in the sense that it's exact. There is numerous times. I mean, again, you could take one piece of article, give it to eight different people, and they would carbon date it at completely different time frames. We've we've seen this. This is actually a thing. This isn't just you know oh we got the tinfoil hat on believing the Bible. No, it's none of that stuff. This is actually a thing. Now I don't know if it's. I'm assuming it's gotten better over time. But I don't know. Although, if you do take into consideration a time dilation field, i.e. God being there, and things literally evolving at a different rate, or just growing and being and, you know, whatever, you would have discrepancies there. Although it is a little disheartening when you have the exact same item that's being carbon dated in like eight different ways from eight different people um, th that's a little problematic but you could maybe make an argument there that there is some potential 
Um, because again, if God did dwell among the people, wherever the people were, they would be outside of time. Because God, again, if He dwelt among them, and He's He is light, and He's literally moving at the speed of light because He is light, and He is the light there, then, like I said, they would be in a, in a pocket of space and time that is outside normal space and time, and you would even have potentially, I don't know, feet, miles, whatever, of time being at a different, time flowing at a different rate than 10 miles out, so to speak, or 50 miles out. You would have this epicenter where it's like, oh, holy shit. Um, so again, you've, you've got these fallen angels in the midst of partial creation because we haven't completely achieved all of creation yet um, now I did kind of throw out the idea of what if we're still living on the sixth day um, because people are still being born I mean I don't know about that but basically, basically just what I was trying to say is that if the angels, the fallen angels, <clears throat> and we have to assume that they were intelligent beings, they could take what was here, and the most dominant species at the time would be reptiles, they could take that, manipulate the DNA. Because again, everybody, like you hear certain Christians saying, oh, well, Satan put the dinosaur bones here to, you know, make people sin or whatever whatever that argument is well, what if he actually did what if they were manipulating DNA to bastardize God's creation and there is there are actually some hints of that in the Bible where it does kind of want to suggest that they did intermingle with the uh, the women they were trying to bastardize well not necessarily trying to bastardize necessarily per se, but they ended up doing that because um, they found the women quote unquote fair, you know, whatever and they took them as wives and it created giants um, so you could have technically had well it depends on what I don't know because there, there could be definitely two variants of it. There's the there's dinosaurs here, and, and some people have made the uh, theory. And this isn't me. This is my theory um, that God created the herbivores and Satan created the carnivores as like bastardized version, which they technically would be. Um, if you look at a T Rex versus a Brontosaurus, that's a bastardized evil version. Okay, you see those teeth and meh. that just looks mean and scary. That looks like it's of the devil. You know. I'll tell you one thing though. Satan definitely created praying mantises. You can kiss my ass on that. Okay. Fuck that. Those things are evil, dude. Those things are just wicked. And owls? Holy shit. You look at those bug eyes and it's like peer into your soul. Those things are from those things are from the devil. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. That's just my own personal uh little uh, hatred of, of certain living things, but whatever. I also think cats are from the devil too, but that's that's my own personal uh, thing I gotta work through, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't like cats. I don't know what it is. I don't like hate them like I want to set them on fire and put them in a bag or something, but I just don't like cats. I Well, it's like all the cats that I've ever had were just complete assholes. I mean, it just... Whatever. Anyways, that's a whole other story for another day. So, you would have the genetic manipulation of the dinosaurs themselves, and then when the quote-unquote the fallen angels had, you know, sex with the women, and the giants were created... You could, especially if they intermingled somehow, and again, if they intermingled the DNA of, let's say, the reptiles into themselves, you could definitely have reptilian-like people. Now, they would be... Because I could see it being more... Because what would happen, 
is after the flood, and this is, again, not my theory, um, what was speculated is that after the flood, the quote unquote giants died, they were these disembodied uh, spirits. Their bodies were gone, but their spirits were just roaming, you know, willy nilly because they had nothing to adhere to. Which is similar to when Christ sent the uh, the pigs into the, the the lake, because because a legion basically they were they are a legion, um, because they have nowhere to dwell, so they indwell people or they indwell you know. I'm saying, what if they indwelled the uh, the reptiles? I mean, think about that, because I am working in, under the assumption that. Dinosaurs survived longer than we think they did. They didn't die out 65 million years ago. Although, I mean, some of them could. Because, again, if we're talking di time dilation field, yeah, they could have some of them could have died out 65 million years ago, but a, po a few pockets of them could have still survived when Adam and Eve were jettisoned from the garden. Again, in a time dilation field. A theory. Which is my theory. Um... And we even know, not that long ago, the knights were going getting dragons and shit. Now, we think of that as a story. What if there were some dinosaurs living in caves? A few holdouts here or there. I mean, is that really far-fetched? I mean, it, seriously, is that legitimately far-fetched? I mean, I mean, shit, we didn't even know that this continent that we live on even existed okay until a few hundred years ago so you're telling me they knew that every single solitary dinosaur really was dead you know and I'm not talking I mean hell maybe even Loch Ness is still there somewhere I don't know no I don't believe that but I mean it could have been that kind of a thing where you've got something in just this little pocket where it's like he's just minding his own business and, and people are like oh it's evil eh, kill it kill it with a sword you know Whatever. I mean, is that really far-fetched? I don't know. I don't think it is. I don't see why it has to be completely... Now, again, I'm not saying that there wasn't a calamity 65 million years ago that killed the dinosaurs. I'm not saying that. But does that mean that every single solitary dinosaur just ceased to exist? I don't know. doesn't necessarily mean that because you could still have that when there's still pockets of them in caves or whatever so that's my that's where I'm basing this on so you've kind of got this this intermingled you know what God created has been bastardized and then they kind of took on the form themselves and became these Anunnaki motherfucker lizard pricks like in V and shit Okay. And what if they were these uh what if they what if they twisted their DNA to be lizard like? Or even took on the form. What if they could take on the form of a lizard? A serpent, a dinosaur kind of a thing. They could just do it willy nilly. Instead of taking on a human form, they could take on a lizard form. Or take on any form they want. I mean if that's the case, they could be my shoes. I'm looking at my shoes over here, that could be a fucking fallen angel sitting there looking at me going, Hey You know, I mean you don't know. You don't know. I mean, if they can control matter in their physical bodies, who's to say they have to take on a certain shape? <clears throat> you know? Now, I would assume that they'd have to take on something of equal mass, but now I'm getting a little bit off top, and it's getting a little stupid, and I don't want to get into that, but whatever. But my theory is, is what if they're all one and the fuck same? What if they're all the same? And you have this idea that... Now think about it. The pyramids could have literally been built by dinosaurs. Now I don't mean actual dinosaurs. Well, yeah, I mean actual dinosaurs, but not like... I mean it more in a Flintstones kind of way. Now think about... Instead of using... 
mean, if you look at the blocks and the size of them, now, one of two theories, and again, this is not my theory, is that there really were giants, like physical giants, and they created these monoliths, which could work, and because the way the theory goes is that before the flood, the earth was rich in oxygen and whatnot, and things grew bigger than what they do today. They just kind of... It's almost like a... I don't know, you got like evolution and then you've got this like... Hyper evolution. And... If the surrounding area was... Met certain criteria. Like high oxygen levels and so on and so forth. You could have huge hulking monsters like T-Rexes and shit. Um... Now, things have obviously changed. Well, like a T-Rex couldn't survive now because he couldn't breathe because of the lack of oxygen. So they couldn't even survive in this temperament. Now, does that mean some of them couldn't? I don't know. Now, when I say the dinosaurs, like they were taking out dragons, I'm saying they're taking out smaller versions of dinosaurs. Not the big towering... Okay. Because if... Our environment did change then they would have adapted to that to a degree now obviously I think a lot of them did get wiped out obviously but pockets of them would adapt and you know they could still be around again but a smaller version but still you know good enough size now if you've got like let's say a, a triceratops like the picture that I'm probably gonna use for this clip, and you got a dude riding on the back of the son of a bitch, now they could be dragging these huge blocks, you get like 10 or 15 of them motherfuckers, I don't know how strong they are, I don't know how big they are, I mean, who the fuck knows, you could have a triceratops dragging, dragging around a bunch of blocks, we do it with horses and shit, now, I'm being a little silly when I say dinosaurs built the, the pyramids, but, um, is it far-fetched? Maybe on some level, but is it completely out of the realm of possibility? No. That's what's weird about it. Is I'm being a little silly. Yes, I'm I'm, I'm putting on the, the tinfoil hat and being silly about it, but... I don't know. Now, there's stuff i got to work through, and I haven't really thought about everything completely, but... <sighs> now, another interesting thing... <clears throat> a little bit off topic, but... Another interesting fact is that, and the Bible even talks about this, where it talks about in the days of Noah, so is the days of Noah, as in when, like, the end of the world will happen, when God will come back. You know, things that we're doing now will be very similar to what they were doing then. And, because we have this, and I'm sorry, I don't like this. I do not like this, uh, view of history where it's I don't even know how to describe it but it's like oh well they were cavemen and they weren't very smart and they were you know this that obviously they had to be pretty damn smart because they were building shit that we cannot even do today you look at the way some of those blocks are cut and fit and perfectly placed together as in, like, a, you, could, you, you barely see the seam you can't even get anything in between that and you look at how that shit was created, we can't even we can't even do that today. So to sit there and say they were just ah, yeah, booga, booga. No, that's bullshit. They clearly had an advanced understanding. The Sumerians specifically had some variant. I mean, dude, they the, the amount of shit that they created. They created our basic calendar. They created uh Time as we know it, 60 seconds in an hour and all that stuff. Or 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. They created all that shit. <laughs> 60 seconds in a minute. Yeah, think about that. Hey, time dilation, it could be. You never know. But they created a bunch of shit. I mean, they created sewer systems. They created. They had schools. They had... Uh, they had art. They had music. Um... Basically, it's, it's like it is today. The fucking Sumerians were doing this shit. 
and we're supposed to just pretend that no, they were just a stupid backwater, you know, hardly hardly evolved ape man who's just like carrying a woman around by her hair with a club. That's what we're told this is supposed to have been. And I'm sorry, the evidence is clear that is not the case. That is simply not the case. And like this whole Stone Age, Bronze Age bullshit. That stuff bugs me too. Now, granted, if you're coming off, let's say, a flood, and you're Noah, yeah, you're going to use shitty tools. You're going to use bark and little stones and shit. But eventually, once you get settled, you're going to start, you know, digging in and getting the copper and the silver and the whatever. Okay. So to sit there and say, well, they were, you know, they were this, that, no. I'm sorry, that bugs me. That just bugs me. I don't... I don't understand the narrative of we right now are, are smart and they were really stupid. Because it has to fit the narrative of evolution that, oh, we came from apes, we came from one-celled organisms, and we eventually slowly got smarter. And there was a time when there was a unevolved human humanoid being and that's what we came from and that's the narrative and because they have to stick to the narrative Sumerian culture that clearly points to shit that is completely outside of what we understand they had a grasp of science they had a grasp of planets they had a grasp of a whole shitload of stuff that even today we don't get and the, I just, I'm sorry that bugs me that absolutely bugs me. No. And I've I've said this from day one, I'll continue to say it. When it says that God created Adam from the dirt or from the dust rather, I mean what is dust? It is human DNA. Dead skin cells. Okay. And under certain circumstances, DNA can leach into soil. Like, if you bury a body, it can leach into the soil, depending on the right conditions. So, essentially, what that could very well be saying is that God came and took DNA samples from the dirt. Now, think about that. Now, what was here before that? Could it have been... A stupid ape, maybe. A damn stinking dirty ape, maybe. I don't know. Could have been, you know, the fallen angels having some sort of physicality. I don't know. But it does say, we will make man in our image. And what did they do? They took that DNA and they manipulated it. And if you look at the chromosomes, there's actually two in there that look like they were legitimately fused in a laboratory somewhere. And it's amazing when you think about that. In fact, the old saying that language is a gift from the gods. Now think about that. If we, Let's say we did come from apes or monkeys or whatever. I mean, and considering there's only a few lines of code different between us and a dolphin, us and a cow, there's only a few, literally a few lines of code that separate us from a cow. I mean, think about that. It's like fringe with Gene, the cow. Think about that. And God came and manipulated the DNA and created us in his image. Or a, a smaller sense, in the angelic image. As in they can take on human form, or humanoid form. I don't know. But it's interesting. I, I definitely think it's interesting. And then Eve, God didn't actually create woman separate. Unless you want to get talking about Lilith and that crap, but I don't, I don't buy that. But Eve was created as a literal clone from his rib. Once, once God had created the the human form, the human DNA structure from DNA that was in the soil, in the dirt, in the dust, whatever from whatever was here, now again, there could have been a big civilization here before this, before us, it could have been apes, it could have been, who the fuck knows what it was? Who knows what it could have been? But that's what it sounds like it's suggesting. 
that there was something here and God created us from that. And then cre God created Eve from Adam. Because again, you got the perfect structure. Why not go one step further and create, you know, why, why recreate it when you could basically just clone it? And again, they were literally one flesh. I mean, they were as married as you're going to get. I mean, think about it. If marriage is between one man, one woman, or at least it should be, the concept, the, the definition of marriage, um, not this, oh, I want to marry whatever the fuck I want to marry just because I feel good about it. <sighs> you know, it's like, I want to be a million dollars, but I go to my bank account, there ain't a million dollars in there. Okay, I can wish you one hand of crap in the other. If you want to get married, there's a way to do it. I'm sorry. Now, again, I'm not against gays when I say that. I do think gays should have something, and they should have equal rights and all that stuff. But to call it something that it's not, I'm sorry. That's just stupid. And that's just boneheaded. You know? It is, it is what it is. Anyways, I don't want to get into that, but... It's, it's, I don't know, this is a fascinating topic to me as far as I'm concerned. Now, again, I'm being a little silly with the whole dinosaurs created the pyramids thing. Um, but you don't know. We don't even know really when the pyramids were created. So you could have had... Well, shit, I mean, what if the Sumerians were not even human beings? What if they were fucking fallen angels living in a society? And then... Adam and Eve came out of the garden, started interacting, and in a few years, he's like, oh, let's take the women. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, cause I'm, 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 I'm trying to put all this together like, could it work? Because you literally have two different pockets. The Garden of Eden was a pocket in and of itself, and there was a quote-unquote serpent who kind of wandered into the garden after God had left for whatever reason. So they went back into the normal time stream and this serpent wandered into the garden. Or wandered at least up to the gate and was like, hey, why don't you, why don't you go do that? Why don't you go eat from that fruit? Eat from that tree. And he's like, okay. You know. Now I, I did kind of suggest in the last one that maybe it was like a telekinesis type uh thing, which I guess could work almost like in a quantum field sort of way, where it's like time and space doesn't really matter. So, I mean, you could have the serpent outside of the garden, or outside the uh, time dilation field, who is telepathically communicating to her who is outside of time, um, but they would have to be linked somehow, and I don't, I'm not sure how that would work. But, if God had actually left the area... Because, again, where was he? If he dwelt among them, then all of a sudden, for one moment, he's gone. And it does say that he literally kind of left and then came back. And when he came back, they were hiding in the bushes saying, oh, we're naked. And he's like, well, who told you that? The serpent. So he obviously left them alone to f basically fall. So, again, I'm saying, what if he left and then he went? they somehow went into the normal time stream? Now think about that. Because if you're in a perfect... Uh, like if you're living in a perfect garden like that, you'd have to be outside of time. You'd have to be. Because what happens when you get into time? Things start to rot. Things start to decay. Things start to age. Things start to die. That's exactly what happened when they left the garden. That, dude, uh, that to me is fascinating right there. That is absolutely fascinating when you think about that. I think the Garden of Eden was outside of time. And because it was directly because of God himself. Now, if we go to heaven and be with God, then we are outside of time. We can no longer decay. We can no longer die. We can no longer, you know, whatever. Now... That's kind of cool when you think about that shit. Because if we are with God and He is energy, and I, thought, I said this a couple times already, but I want to reiterate it. If He is energy and He is He is light, the Bible does say He is light, God is light. 
and the, f the closest you get to light, more time slows down. Well, if you are light, then there is no time. So where God is, there is no time. Absent from the body, present with the Lord, you, you're, you're not confound by the construct of, of time anymore. The physical matter does not age. So whatever physical being we will be, the spiritual body, it will not age. It can't age. If, you know, as long as we're with God. Now, I don't know if... But then that means we can never really leave his side, though. That's, that's kind of a problematic issue. Unless we too can achieve light. That would be interesting. What if... Well, actually, when when it talks about Lot and the angels, the angels came and kind of took on a human form. What if, when they took on a human form, they they were aging for that amount of time? Now, granted, they only aged for maybe half hour, but you do that a couple billion times. You know, next thing you know, every time they take human form, it's, they're getting older and older. I don't know. That would be kind of cool too. I wonder if you could uh, like regenerate that. Because obviously angels are not God. So, if they're fucking around down here, and they are taking on physical form in, a, in like matter, sort of, sort of speak. Um, then they would age. So when they were here, if an angel takes human form, they are aging for the amount of time they're here. Now, whether they can go back to see God and it kind of reverts back, I don't know. Because if he's outside of time, I don't know. There could be a time. It's like, oh, I was on earth for 50 years and I got old and I went to see Jesus and now I'm young again. I don't know. That would be kind of cool. Because if he's outside of time, I suppose you could revert back, maybe? I don't know. That, that would, I'd have to think about that a little bit. But, um, but anyways, here's another interesting thing that was bugging me and this is off topic but I think it might even be connected maybe possibly like I'm going to try to make it connected so I'm going to basically I'm going to do what I did with the last clip and just kind of fuck around with it and see where I go see see where I can take it and that's the idea that the moon <laughs> is is not only hollow but it's a hologram and that we never really got outside of the outer atmosphere of Earth. Now that's the theory. I didn't make it up. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna play with it a little bit and see where we go with it. But because there's definitely some interesting problems with the moon. There was that NASA story that uh, they released not that long ago, I think. Well, when the astronauts went up there, they actually heard music. Um, now, one of the arguments is that when you see, like, just the sliver of the moon, that sometimes in the dark part, you see stars going through there. Now, you could maybe make the argument that... I'm not, I'm not even sure what it's called. I forgot what it's called. But there's a... Oh, we've seen it happen before where it distorts and you actually see two variants of it and it looks like there's two stars but it's actually the same star in the way the gravitational like something's in front of it and the, and the gravitational field is fucking up the view and it actually splits the image so that when you're looking at it from earth it looks like holy shit there's two identical stars well they're not it's the same star so maybe you could make that argument the only problem with that is the moon isn't that far away that's the only real argument there so what if the moon is a hologram covering something up because there are actual and this is actually fascinating I didn't even know this um, I just heard it tonight literally for the first time I'm like 41 years old so what the fuck um, there's just actual stories and even the Bible itself mentions there's a time before the moon there's like Job I want to say 22? I could be wrong. And then Psalms 75, 72, something like that, whatever. Um, 
And there's all these other stories. Even uh, Carl Sagan mentioned some of this stuff. Um, even NASA scientists have said some of this stuff. Um, that there was actually a time before the moon existed. There was the sun, and then there was the moon. And that there's actual stories, like ancient stories of there's a time before there was a moon. There was no moon. And what if, and I'm going to throw this out there, this is, this is my own little theory that I'm making up right now on the spot. What if the moon itself created the flood? Now, I'm just going to throw that out there. Because, like some people want to say that there's you know, blue, uh, Project Blue Beam or something is is beaming up there and it's making the, the moon show. That, to me, is kind of stupid because I think there's enough evidence that the moon was there in ancient times, obviously. Again, the Bible talks about it, and the Bible was at least, what, four to 6,000 years, depending on the book. Maybe, maybe even a little later than that. Um, so, whatever. So this isn't like some new thing that they've been doing. Now, like NASA scientists are actually kind of confused by why the moon doesn't have the density that it should for its size. And they did this experiment. I didn't even realize this. Um, I did some sort of seismic activity on the moon. And what happened was the waves kept bouncing around again, like a hollow earth, and it, it, they refer to it as like it was ringing like a bell. And it's really kind of cool when you think about that, because it's kind of fucked up. Um, no, this is assuming they went, actually did go there. Um, because that's, uh, personally, I still think that's a little bit questionable, but <sighs> whatever. There's even uh, this talk of people who um, actually film the moon from Earth and they see these lights and shit and they're like this this and even the astronauts said there was this um shit what was it? I can't I wanna say uh I forgot what what mission it was but NASA I think there's actually a recording of this or something or whatever it's in the transcripts or something <clears throat> where NASA asked them we see, because we're looking at the moon from, from our station, we see this greenish light. And they're like, yeah, we see it too. <laughs> okay. And you go back to the whole thing where it was playing music. The astronauts, uh, supposedly, as the story goes, they were debating whether they should even tell NASA because they were, you know, they're going to basically fuck their careers up if they're like, oh yeah, the moon's up here that's playing music. You know? It's like, what the fuck? You know? Because nobody knows where the moon came from. We don't know where the moon came from. I mean, not that we could, or even should, but we don't know where it came from. Now, that you, you gave me bullshit with this one other time, but this is actually a thing that if you put it into a computer model, the Earth, the way, or the way the moon spins around the Earth, it is slowly moving away from Earth. And I forgot the time frame, but if we're talking like trillions of billions of years from like when Earth was formed, and if you actually spin it backwards, it would smack right into Earth. It would literally just rewind and go right into Earth, like they would collide. Um, so there had to have been a time before there was a moon. So either the moon kind of drifted into our orbit, and we were like, hey, and you just started spinning around each other, having a dance off, or it smacked into Earth like it, while it was forming and shit. And that's one of the theories. That's not my theory. That's one of the theories. You know, or some other shit. Because, if you, again, if you look at how old they speculate the Earth is, and then you rewind, like, the, the moon at its current pace, they would connect at some point. They would collide with one another. 
Again, that's not me saying this. Uh, you can, you can, no, that's not me saying this. That's what other people are saying. And hell, even NASA's got a, a, a program, uh, they've got a, a model saying the same thing. So it's like, I'm not making this shit up. I mean, it, it's a simple matter of fact. It's like, it is going, I don't know what it is, inches, centimeters, whatever. Every year, it gets a little further and further away. Again, because our universe is expanding. So, that's just how it works. Well, if you backtrack the model, you know, the, the, the current rate, they would eventually meet. And, so in other words, the moon hasn't always been here. It hasn't always been in our orbit. And there's actually, like I said, there's, there's actual ancient stories of a time before the moon which is I, I find that fascinating because um well it's kind of fucked up now what if the earth is or what if I keep saying earth what if the moon is a hologram what if there's something there and it's the hologram that it's showing and they use the example of, um, well, they use the example of DreamWorks, where they, where you see the little moon and the little little guys up there fishing. And he's hanging out, sitting off the thing, and you look down, and you see the moon's reflection in the water. It's kind of that, where it's like this. Uh, well, essentially, it's a holographic universe, and it's just basically saying it's just bullshit. Now, because. Again, the problem is, if you look at the exact distance, the exact everything about it, like if you look at the, the sun and the moon, they're the exact same size. Now, obviously, the sun is further away, but there was something to do, and I forgot, but if you calculate the distance and blah, 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 it comes up to like 108, and you see a lot of 108 in architecture of like ancient peoples and shit, and all this other stuff. So there's like this mathematical bullshit. Um, again, I'm not making this up. This is just what's there. Um, and it's kind of fascinating, actually. Because our moon does control tide. And our moon does do, you know, supposedly, that's what they say. So what if it created the flood? What if the moon came into orbit or was put in orbit, rather, by something. And, like I said, created the flood. Now, I don't know what that would entail. I don't know what that would be. I mean, could it be a fallen angel spaceship? I mean, think about that. No, again, I'm taking it more if they're actual physical beings and not just spiritual beings. And I'm being a little silly with that one, but I don't know. What if it's what if it is the Anunnaki? Some alien fucking lizard bastard race. I don't know. What if it is hollow? What if because some people are, they were literally describing it like the Death Star kind of a deal. And yeah, that's a little cheesy, but you know. It ain't no moon, basically. And it was something to do with the... Uh, the different craters and stuff. They're too shallow. So there's definitely some... Uh, what's the word? There's definitely some... Questionable shit. No, we don't... We, NASA, did not want to go back there. They do not want to go back there. Russia doesn't want to go back there. Well, why? Oh, here's another interesting fact. Again, assuming we went there. Apparently they're going to, they, somebody, I don't know who it is, a private company somewhere, wants to send up machines to drill and mine. And this is an, an official NASA documentation that there's certain... Um, I forgot how they worded it. I forgot what the exact terminology was. Um, 
but there's certain refined processed minerals and shit and, and like whatever the stuff is that isn't found naturally like there's I want what's it I want to say plutonium or uranium or, no uranium or something like that whatever something to do with like a nuclear thing that they found and the only way we've ever seen it is after we've we've processed the shit now think about that what if that's true what if there's non natural materials up there and it's kind of fascinating that NASA wants nothing to do with it anymore and then again you look at that and I'm sorry this is a pet peeve of mine and I'm going to say it from day one but I think it was Apollo 11 yeah it was Apollo 11 you look at their press conference now these are people who supposedly went to the moon made it back safely and are doing a press conference and they're like yeah we went there and you know we had a great time and <laughs> it was just every one of them act like their fucking dog had just died okay or like their grandma forgot their birthday or something they were like depressed and it, it was the weirdest fucking thing you can go and watch that shit these are not men who just came back from like the greatest experience ever now maybe you could chalk that up like oh it's such a great experience now they're back on earth and they're kind of depressed and they're really tired okay maybe you could if you want to get cute maybe make that argument but i don't know man if i just came back from the moon and be like holy shit motherfucker you should see the shit it's huge now i'll be honest with you, i would even argue that no human being mentally could deal with something like that leaving earth and going to the moon just the idea of it it's pretty fucked up i mean that's that's some scary shit okay that's some psychological fuckery that's that's a mind fuck right there basically and i would argue that i don't think anybody i don't care how much nasa training you got i don't care what you've done to train for something like this that's gonna fuck you up okay when you realize that you're in this sardine can flying away from the planet even if it's just to the nearest neighbor of the moon and you're on the moon you're seeing earth from there dude that's got to be fucked up that dude, i'm not skipping around and playing golf dude and none of that shit i'm, I'm gonna be sitting there weeping in my fucking spacesuit and then shitting myself okay now, maybe I just don't have what it takes to be a, a NASA astronaut. I don't know. But nobody, I'm sorry. This isn't like, oh, gee, I'm going to go to Afghanistan and, uh, you know, work for the CIA or something. Or go to the military and go to Afghanistan or some bullshit. Okay, no. No, you're talking about leaving the fucking Earth. You're talking about supposedly leaving terra fuck firma okay and going to literally an alien world where even a mild scratch in your suit could kill you and, and you're going in the sardine can built in the 50s and 60s and 70s okay because you know that technology was not up to par you just know it was I mean shit watch Apollo 13 they had square pegs and round holes and shit okay <laughs> this is fucking stupid and we're supposed to believe that they magically just made it to, made it to space now I'm sorry the whole the whole space race thing was bullshit now either we were fucking around and be like well you know yeah. but if you think about it the Russians were way ahead of us. I've, I've said this before. I'll continue to say it because it's bullshit. The Russians were far ahead of us. Then all of a sudden, because what happened was we could not get the rocket to, lead, to get off the fucking ground. We couldn't even fuck getting in the outer atmosphere or getting it into space. We couldn't even get it off the ground. I was like, what, 10, 12 failed attempts or some shit? I don't remember what it was. Um, 
And then just as they were getting close, we're like, oh, by the way, we're on the moon. Huh, huh, look, look, there we are. Live telecast. Do you really think that any broadcast would show a live event of this type of caliber when any small thing could be catastrophe and death? They're going to show the death of astronauts on national TV live? I think it was either fake or they had already done it. I don't think it was live. Because again, are you, are you going to show that shit? I remember when, I remember what, 81 when the Challenger blew up? We were just going to watch it lift off. Okay, and the thing... Mm -hmm. It blew up. I knew instantly when it when it blew up, and I was a kid. I was whatever age it was. I knew instantly something was wrong because it's like, and then I saw the teacher's reaction, and she's like, "Oh, okay, uh, yeah, we're gonna turn the TV off now," <laughs> and just sit there quietly. And then they, she ran to the main office, and they're like, "What do we do? These kids just saw a trauma, and yeah, we're gonna get a half a day." So yeah. <laughs> You, you, I seriously, you really think? And again, that was just a lift off. That wasn't to, you know, go into space. You know, that wasn't to land on the moon. That was none of that shit. That was just, that was just a rocket lifting off. And yet they're going to show this live on TV with like no, uh, I mean, it must have been a sixty-second delay or some shit going on there, a six-hour delay, something. I don't know. I cry bullshit on that one because you're just not going to do that even if it is a different time or was a different time rather you're not going to show that unless you know for a fact the motherfucker ain't going to die I mean at any moment that ship could have just blown up okay it's like hey and they're sitting there with their little little uh, astronaut ice cream that's all dehydrated and they're sitting they're floating upside down and their hair is streaming down they're like hey and they're reading books and things are floating around and the whole thing's gone and everybody's dead and you're you hear a little scream and everything fizzles out and goes to black really on national TV really 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 so yeah, that I have a little bit of a problem with now that I think about it. Because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Now, a lot of people want to say, well, there couldn't be a flat earth because of the way the the moon and the the the, the way the uh ellipses and eclipses work. But what if it's a hologram? What if it's bullshit? What if it's bullshit? You could have a flat earth and it still be bullshit. You realize that. You, you do realize that. You could have flat earth and bullshit. Think about that. I'm sorry, when I look up at uh, Sirius, it's the star, and I see it blinking lights at me, and putting things into my brain. I'm, dude, I'm fucking telling you right now, it's some sort of CIA kind of type, not that it's CIA, but it's that type of blinking light bullshit where it wants to, like, you know, fuck with you. Mind control. Whatever's going on, it's serious. And I don't mean FM, I mean the fucking star. There's some shit going on here. I said to one time, I swear to God, I watched that thing for about two hours. I was sitting outside. It was a nice summer afternoon or whatever. Summer night, whatever. I watched it for about two hours. And I saw the pattern. There was a legitimate red, blue, green. Red, blue, green. And I think it was even another color, like a purplish color or something. Whatever it was, I can't remember. It was just, it kept doing the same pattern over and over, over and over. And it was blinking fucking lights. There was no star, there was no moons, there was no nothing there. It was blinking fucking lights at me. And I looked up at that star and I said, what the fuck are you doing to me? And so, what kind of shit you putting in my brain? I actually said that. I was sitting on the porch. I, was, I looked up pointed. I said, what are you trying to put in my brain, motherfucker? You're a fake fucking star. You're not real. 
You're not there. You're bullshit. You're bullshit. Holographic universe. Fuck you. Now, maybe I'm out of my mind. I don't know. I was talking to the stars. Yes, I was. But there's some weird fucking shit going on. I'm telling you right now. It's not just as innocent. Like, oh, we went to the moon. And it's uh, everything's round and planets and great. No. I mean, think about it. We saw the Truman Show. I mean, for fuck's sake, think about that. Have you been to space? No, you can't. You can't confirm nor deny any of that. No, again, if the moon is is a cover up for something, like let's say there's a uh, alien craft, I mean, it has to be pretty big, actually. Well, actually, no, it doesn't. I mean, if we're being realistic. Let's take this to the nth degree. It doesn't have to be that far away. We say, well, the moon is X number of miles and blah, blah, blah. No, it doesn't have to be. It could actually be much closer. It's just the way the the hologram works. I don't mean hologram like holographic universe. Exactly. I mean it more in the, the way the light is refracted, reflected, whatever. Um... Basically, it's a cloak for a ship. You could have a ship up there that's in our Earth orbit and not as far out as the moon actually is supposedly supposed to be, but it's, like, actually much closer. I mean, you could see it with a regular camera. You can see really good detailed pictures of the moon just with a basic camera that you get off the shelves. You don't need this $1,000 telescope to see the damn thing. I mean, it helps, it's nice, but you don't need that shit. You don't. Now think about the fact that... Because really, the only thing that proves that we're not a flat Earth is that. Now, if you take that out of the equation, what are you left with? I don't know. And there's definitely some questionable shit. Again, the astronauts said they heard music. The shit rang like a bell. Okay. And it does have less mass than it's supposed to. Supposedly. At least that's what NASA says. So there's definitely something fishy about the some bitch. Now what if it's a big conspiracy and a big fucking hoax? I don't know. I don't know. Is that even remotely possible? Is it tinfoil hat? Maybe. Is it possible? Dude, anything's possible. Anything is fucking possible. I mean, seriously. Any damn thing is possible. So, but again, what, I mean, think about what that would mean. No, if we're living in a world where the elites, whatever they are, New World Order, Illuminati, whatever you want to call them, um, are a bunch of Luciferian fucks and hate God. Now think about it. You got a bunch of people who hate God and don't want to acknowledge that the God exists, so they tell us, oh, well, yeah, ancient man was a caveman and because he, you know, he's pro magnan man and Homo, homo erectus and fuck that shit and whatever else. I mean, you wonder why the faggot went extinct. He's homo erectus. His dick's hard and he's homo. And wonder, seriously, no wonder why he's extinct. I mean, what the fuck? And it, he, he couldn't have created all this great stuff. But yeah, we see the architecture and it's like, how the fuck did that happen? Uh, caveman must have done it. Caveman just dirt, tink, 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 tink. Fuck that bullshit. Fuck that shit. Look at the shit. Look at the fucking Sumerian architecture. That is no caveman, motherfucker. Okay. Remember that cartoon? Captain Caveman? Captain Caveman! He had a little cape and shit, an old club. Remember that shit? I don't know if you saw it. You probably did. You must have. Holy shit. I... <laughs> he, he looked like a, a fucking hairy little nut, is what he looked like. And I mean, testicle nut. Captain Caveman. I think that was his name. Was that his name? Captain Caveman? Something like that. Whatever. Um, that motherfucker ain't building shit, dude. He didn't build dick. Okay. These motherfuckers were building shit 
that we can't do today. And that's a problem. Now think about this. You got an alien race that's masking their ship that's in Earth orbit to look like the moon. And it's fucking up the tides. And it created the, uh, the flood. Now think about that. Now, obviously, the moon itself is stationary. It hasn't taken off. It hasn't left. Okay. So, what if it was... Now, we got the asteroid belt. What if... Now, people want to speculate that that was a planet that was destroyed. Something must have hit it to destroy it. What if these were, like, the people of that planet in their little last ditch effort to put themselves like Superman in a little little ship and send you know send the sun of Krypton off the fucking earth yellow sun bullshit okay now granted it's right next door but whatever it, I don't know I mean like I want to believe that it's just you know hey it's just there whatever but there's too many fucking problems with it now, again, I'm, I'm putting on the tinfoil hat and being silly here on some of this stuff, but I don't know. I mean, you could really have a flat earth concept. You could. And if that's the case, I mean, what would... If earth is flat, let's just say for an instant, for just even a split second, multiverse, one of the multiple possibilities we're living in the one where earth is actually flat let's just say let's just say what would that mean that means that whoever the illuminati elite motherfuckers are they're trying to cover up that there is a god why would they want to do that because they don't like god okay now think about that you why would they be doing all of this? I don't understand the point of that. So, who do we know that don't like God? Um, I don't know. Fallen angels? Lucifer? Satan? I don't know. Maybe there's a connection there. Maybe there's a connection there. I don't know. Maybe they're actually held up on the fucking moon somewhere. Inside the fucking thing. I don't know. I mean, whatever. But, uh... I mean, think about that. Imagine if it was a hologram. And there is some... Uh, again, not my theory, but definitely... There's some interesting points to the it's a hologram there are there's definitely some interesting things I'm not saying they're true I'm saying they're interesting I don't believe it at that interesting can be good interesting can be bad it's it's a it's a non-answer basically okay and that's all I'm gonna say on that it's interesting might be stupid might be true interesting Ugh. Because that would definitely put a little fucking different paint job on things. Because everything revolves literally around the fucking moon. You have people who worship the moon. There are people today who worship the moon. Well, why would you worship the moon? Unless it's tied to Lucifer somehow. I don't know. What if the Anunnaki, what if the lizard people did come from the fucking moon? I don't mean like from the moon, but I'm talking like if it's a spaceship with a cloaking device that looks like the moon. It looks like a, a rock. Think about that. That is not far from. It's a little science, a little science, a uh, little sci-fi, but uh, it's not crazy. That's not crazy. You got an advanced civilization, and what's interesting is, especially if you're talking about Big Bang and shit. And I'm sorry, but when God said, "Let there be light," uh, but there was light. I don't think it just kind of, boop. That sounds like it would have, I don't know, a big bang to it, but that's just me. And if the universe is expanding, 
then there literally is, and I use the term time dilation because I like the sound of it. I like the way I like the I just, I just like the idea of time dilation. Um, you would have certain parts of you know space that are way older than others because it would just shat out. So like the stuff come the stuff from the center is going to be younger than the stuff that's way out there. It just has to be. It just it does. It has to be that way. So if you got what we are, wherever we are in the time frame, you could have a gazillion years older out there. So yeah, you could have you know a quote unquote an evolved species, whatever. And if they came to Earth, they came here, and they terraformed it in the whole nine. You could, I mean, all of it could work. I mean, it could all work. Now, there's that uh, that satellite, that that Black Knight satellite or whatever it is, or Dark Knight satellite, whatever. Dark no, D Dark Knight's Batman, so it's probably Black Knight. Whatever it is. Now I don't know about that. That's weird. Some people said it's a hoax. Some people said it's not a hoax. Some people, whatever. It's been here for thousands of years or whatever. It's cool. I'm not going to lie. Even if it is a hoax, it's a cool hoax. I'm not going to say. Um, what if that's part of the... What if that's part of the ship? What if that's part of the moon? Or, you know, the, what we see is the moon. Because, I mean, think about it. If you've got this holograph, holograph, hologram, how about that word, you fucking moron? Holograph, what a douche. <sighs> fucking stupid, dude, I'm tired. Three, dude, it's three o'clock in the morning, I'm, I'm fucking tired, so give me a goddamn break. If it is, actually, think about it. What if the phases of the moon were most of it's black? is simply to save energy. So instead of having the full moon all the time, it circulates through the thing. And it looks like, oh, it's just it's revolving around Earth. It's, you know, whatever. What if it's not? And what if there's uh, an actual agenda? And every time you see the ellipse... It's like, oh, look, it's a circle. Everything's circular. Because, you know, NASA went into space, went to the moon. And it's not just a fucking dome. Because what's interesting is when... When we, when we were testing nuclear fucking weapons, we started blowing them up in the atmosphere. Now, some people, and again, this is not my theory. This is what other people are saying. Take it for what it's worth. That the point is that they wanted to, quote, unquote, crack the dome. Which, I, I don't know how I feel about that, because that's kind of fucked up. That's a little bit fucked up. No, obviously, on some level, the Babylonian people thought they could reach, you know, build a tower to reach into heaven. Um, so, I don't know. Now, if you reach up high enough and you get to the top, now, obviously, you'd run out of air, but... They probably didn't know that. Um, whatever. Although I suppose you could build it, maybe. So it's almost like, uh, like if you kind of took a canoe and put it like over your head and you went like in a lake or something, there could be air inside that, and maybe they could do something like that. I don't know, but that'd be kind of weird. Um, and there's probably ways they could circulate the air and shit. So even though it's like up in the outer atmosphere, you probably could have air in the top part of it. <clears throat> Assuming it was enclosed. Um, you could maybe be thin, but I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I'm whatever. There's also another idea, and this isn't my idea, there's also another idea that Adam and Eve were not six feet tall. They were like really tall. Because if the environment, and this is what I was talking about the dinosaurs, if the environment 
was set up so that organic beings could grow tall and be like super tall, like tall as trees and even taller, then Adam and Eve would have been part of that. Even if they were outside of time. They could have been 15 feet tall. Could have been. We don't know that as a fact. We, have you seen their skeleton? No. I haven't. You haven't. You don't know. Which I think is kind of interesting in and of itself. Because again, if you're talking about that time frame, you would literally have giant dinosaurs, you have giant animals, you'd have giant basically everything. Um, and if you think about it, the only evidence that we have is just the fossils. And it doesn't mean that everything went into a certain requirement that it, to take what it, let me restate that the requirements that it would take to make a fossil not every living thing fell into that now if you want to talk about a worldwide flood you know dirt and shit would kick up and you'd have different layers and heavier things would fall you know to the bottom and lighter things would be at the top and you'd have all this you know all this different shit so I don't know but what if there were giants in the land what if there really were actual giant human beings? No. There are some pictures, some are hoaxes, some of them are questionable of like giant mummies and shit. But there are people who have grown really super tall, even in our own time. There's, there's people who've grown really tall. I mean, shit, Big Show's seven feet tall. That's not really tall, but there's that one... Uh, Asian dude, holy shit, what is he, like 15 dude, he's gotta be at least 15 feet tall I mean, the guy's huge and there's that one basketball player these guys are like up there they're, they're not like, you know 7, 8 feet these guys are way up above that shit okay, there's, there's, I, what the fuck is the name of that guy, he's that little Asian dude I can't remember, he's just goofy looking as fuck but He's like super fucking tall. He's way over eight feet tall. I want to say closer to fifteen. I don't know the exact what it is, um, and that's today. That's in our, our what we see today, and we do know that giganticism is a thing. I mean, again, Big Show is a great example of that. Andre the Giant was a good example of that. Now, the reason, and I'll be honest with you, the reason those two guys didn't get bigger is because of the environment like if we were living in an oxygen rich environment they would have been shit they could have been way taller shit they could have been 20 feet tall who the fuck knows I mean seriously if you put put this shit in the right environment it's like anything else now okay maybe 20 feet I don't know it might be a little pushing it but whatever you know what I mean they could have been much taller than they were but again, the only reason they, they really didn't is because, you know, the environment stopped them. No, again, if you're talking pre-flood, you're talking right after, like, Adam and Eve. Um, yeah, I mean, you're talking climate change, you're talking whole nine. It could have really... Uh, oh, another interesting thing is that supposedly the meteorite that took out the dinosaurs... Shit, I'm on low battery. Fuck! Um, may have actually hit an ice plate, which then would have melted, because it would have broke off and went into warmer waters, melted, and created the flood. You could have that as an argument. So the dinosaurs died in the flood, which is why we have all these dinosaur bones, because they were covered in the dirt. Because when everything settled... You could have that argument. Um, actually, shit. Let's tie the two together. What if, what if the moon, whether it's a spaceship, whether it's a hologram, let's just say it's a big rock. What if it 
was either part of the asteroid belt or whatever part of what hit the asteroid belt or whatever. I mean, realistically, not just one big rock is going to come toward us. You'd have maybe 10 or 15 even. Some are going to miss, some are going to hit, some are going to hit the water, some are going to hit... I mean, we've been impacted numerous times before. You, there's clear evidence of that. So what if the moon rolled up and brought this big thing, boom. Now again, I'm not saying it was 65 million years ago. I'm not saying... Because again, I think the time... Because again, we see the Sumerians. They were not cavemen, but we're told that, well, it was 65 million years ago. It's got to be. It has to be because it's the evolution. We gotta, we gotta, basically make everything fit the evolutionary idea. And I'm sorry, that's just bullshit to me. You should take the evidence and go with it. Because right now, Sumerians disprove evolution. <laughs> they do. At least the narrative. Again, they weren't cavemen, and they were more advanced than we are today, and they were smarter than we are today. So, if they're wrong in that, why do we automatically say, well, yeah, it was 65 million years ago? Well, if it wasn't. And again, if you're talking like a time dilation thing, um, actually, shit, dude, if you're, talking, if you're talking any type of time manipulation of any kind, um... I suppose you could, I mean, you could have your 65 million year time frame, but then have it be almost last week for Adam and Eve who were in the time bubble. And then the surrounding area could have been 50 million years. I mean, who the fuck knows? I mean, because especially when you're dealing with time, it's an interesting thing. Now, I'm not saying that any of it's true. I'm just saying that, you know, there's a possibility. And again, I, I don't know. I have, I have mixed feelings about how, how I'm supposed to take all that. Because, again, they're clearly bullshit. Now, I understand you have to take what's there and make a, you know, an idea, a theory. And then you take the theory and you try to prove it. And, okay, the Sumerians, we found the Sumerians. And it says that they weren't very, they weren't very stupid. Okay. So we got to rethink our plan, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. I could deal with that. But people are still saying we evolved from apes. 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs died out. And there's absolutely no proof of any of that. Oh, yes, there is. There's just that. Blah, 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 blah. No, there's not. There is not. They got two, they got two bone chips and a fucking piece of pottery, and they know prehistory. Pre is in, you know, as far back as we can actually go, which was about... Six to ten thousand years, give or take. Anything before that, it's bullshit. I mean, the Sumerians are older than that. You know, so come on. And they keep changing the dates. Well, you know, the pyramids were six thousand years, the pyramids were four thousand years. Now they might be ten thousand years, then maybe a hundred thousand years. They keep changing this shit all the time. But yeah, certain things are stone. The dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago because we need a lot of time to evolve everything. And it's just, dude, I'm sorry. It's stupid. It's stupid. And especially if you throw in the idea of any type of genetic manipulation on anything, whether it's a fallen angel, whether it's people, whether it's whatever. Hell, it could be fucking time travel. We could have scientists from today who have traveled back in time to manipulate DNA to create the dinosaurs, and it looks like it's been 65 million years ago. Because we had to have all this time for the shit to, to evolve. And it was just some schmuck in a fucking lab coat who traveled back in time in a DeLorean. Who the fuck knows? That's infinitely more likely than to say any of that shit is possible. Because... Yeah, my idea is like, oh, it's, you know, it's tinfoil hat, but 65 million years ago isn't tinfoil hat. Well, no, because there's proof. Based on what? You got a bunch of people who want to deny... See, this is the problem. This is what I have a problem with, 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 uh... Uh, what, what that black guy, uh... Uh, whatever the fuck his name is. 
Jackie, no, not Jackie Gleason. Uh, Jackie Gleason. Neil, Neil, this Neil, whatever the fuck his name is, is he purposely wants to go out and say, "Oh, there's no God. There's no God. There can't be a God. There can't be a God. There can't be a God." Well, that's narrow-minded as fuck, dude. I'm sorry. If God is a legitimate argument for a possibility of how we came to be then we should want to say, okay, maybe that's still on the table. But no, he's automatically, well, no, because, you know, it's stupid, and anybody who believes in it's stupid, and science shows that they're stupid, and, you know, it's good to believe in, in something when you can't figure it out, but then once you figure it out, you have to you have to kind of put the old ways aside, and God is stupid, and you're stupid for believing. Dude, I'm sorry. That's, that in and of itself is stupid. You're talking about a guy who's supposed to be about science, which is finding the truth in the subject. What if the truth is that God is a thing? Just because you don't want to believe in God doesn't mean God doesn't exist. And just because I want to believe... And flip that. Doesn't mean God exists on my side either. Just because I want it to be true doesn't mean it is. And just because he wants it to be not true doesn't mean, you know... Whatever. So, th I'm sorry that attitude and that that, that just bugs me. It's like because you're taking something that could be legitimate off the table. It could be bullshit too. It could be complete fantasy bullshit. Okay, but yeah, 65 million years ago, based upon two two chipped teeth and a, and a fucking piece of pottery. Um. Yeah, you'll you'll jump on that bandwagon with little to no proof, and just make up hypothesis after hypothesis and theory after theory, and it's like, oh, it fits. But yet, a legitimate potential argument, you're like, no, it can't be a god. No, it can't be. That's uh, that that's pushing the limit of science. I mean, really, really. You believe in a fucking space alien that evolved out of nothing when there's no proof that evolution on that kind of a grand scale even is possible. Yes, maybe in a micro uh, micro evolution on some level of adapting to the situation and adapting the things. Yes. But as far as going from a one-celled organism to a human being, there is zero proof of that. It's infinitely more likely that an alien came manipulated the DNA so that you have one thing and then another. So there will never be a missing link because the missing link was done in a lab. That is infinitely more likely than to say that things just randomly happened. Now, I'm being a little sarcastic with the idea of evolution. I understand that, but I'm trying to simplify it. And, uh, and again, I'll be honest with you, I... You know, hey, guess what? God may not exist. Evolution may be the, the actual 100% way to go. I'm trying to paint a picture of, okay, what if it's not? What if God is a thing? Because guys like Neil in, in uh, what's his name, in the little wheelchair there, they want to instantly say God can't be part of this discussion. Why the fuck not? You're talking quantum physics. You're talking... Spooky action, you're talking all this bullshit, and, uh, and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, that's, that's, you know, there might be a spiritual component there, and even, even, what's his face, and, God, what is it, I keep forgetting his name, uh, what's his name, a little wheel wheelchair there with the teeth, a little, 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 little teeth there, a little teeth grin, um, whatever, he's even saying that things like CERN could open up a portal to another dimension. And it's shit that they shouldn't do, and we, we don't want this to happen. And yeah, there could be beings in that other... He even said that. That there could be something there that wants to communicate <laughs> and fuck us, basically. He even said that shit. Hawkins, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. He was even saying that. that they don't, they were going to open up a door, and this is off their direct fucking website, that they want to open up a door and communicate on some level. They want to send two particles, they want to quantum, quantum physicize the fucking things, and then have it spin one way, and then send the other through, and have it spin the other way, and put mathematical code in there, and try to communicate with something on the other side. They actually want to communicate with an entity. 
This is a thing on their fucking website. This isn't a joke. This isn't conspiracy. This is nothing. This is what this is what their their game plan is. This is one of the things they want to do at CERN, and that, that's what's so freaky about the shit. And like I said, even Hawking is like, you don't want to open that door. You do not want to cross that line. Or, you know, you know, the veil. They basically want to they want to take away the veil. And the Bible talks about that shit. And that shit you just don't fucking want to do. Because <laughs> once you remove the veil, there's no going back. If Once you open that door, you ain't going back. So if they're trying to suck dark dark matter into this world that could be a problem that could be a serious fucking problem and 